The biggest bottleneck between you and your most exciting, ambitious goals is focus. It doesn't matter whether you want to be a professional tennis player, a best-selling author, or a damn good data scientist. Focus is a superpower. The importance of focus was crystallized in my mind in my final year of university whilst preparing for a computational intelligence exam, an exam that I was really worried I would fail. And if I had failed, it would have delayed my graduation, meaning that I wouldn't be able to get my first data science job. But as the pressure of exam season mounted, I devised a system that allowed me to do nine hours of focused work a day. And here's the kicker, it wasn't even mentally taxing. To my surprise, that exam ended up being my highest scoring module. So I was able to get this data science job I currently have. But when I started this job, I quickly realized that I was slowly losing that superpower. As the never ending stream of Slack messages, Asana notifications and emails slowly began to wear away at my ability to focus. I've now realized that if I am to achieve those lofty career goals that I have, focus will be key just as it was in my final year of university. And I've once again developed that system that allows me to do seven to nine hours of focused work, even with a nine to five. Today, I'll be sharing the principles behind my focused workflow, exactly how I structure my day and why a single flashcard is the key to it all. That's right, principle zero. And that's because this step is so foundational, it will increase the potency of everything else that I mentioned today. It's an incredibly straightforward step, but it does honor Pareto's principle. And this is one of those 20% of actions that will get you 80% of the results. Listen, when I used to watch productivity videos like this and anybody mentioned a step remotely like this, I completely ignore it because I can keep a track of what I have to do mentally, right? But what that meant is that I consistently fell victim to the Zagarnik effect. Essentially, the Zagarnik effect is that we tend to remember uncompleted or unsolved tasks better than we do solved tasks. So essentially, any task that we haven't completed takes up RAM in our memory, even if we're not focusing on it. So as a data scientist, at any point, especially when you're still learning, SQL, Python, domain knowledge, as well as mathematics are all legitimate things to sit down and study. But what that means is that anytime you are studying, you have four incomplete tasks. So if you sit down to do some Python, in the back of your mind, your brain will be thinking, wow, I should be doing mathematics. Actually, domain knowledge will be important. But what that means is that you don't focus on the Python in front of you. But interestingly, what a 2016 study found is that the simplest way to counter this Zygonic effect is by simply writing a list, a to-do list of sorts. What essentially happens is that your brain, by writing it out, acknowledges that this task will be gotten to in due time, so it closes that tab, opening up more RAM in your brain and allowing you to focus much more. So that list the night before is essentially closing down different tasks because your brain will address it when it's time. Making that list doesn't have to take 20 minutes. Honestly, mine takes two to three minutes every night. It's literally just simple bullet points. Try it out, trust me, it will help. Let's look at the structure of my day before moving on to the rest of the principles. I typically have two types of days where I have to focus. Weekdays where I have my nine to five to contend with and only a few hours after work to do anything else. And then weekends where I have a lot more freedom and because I'm still doing my dissertation, I do need long periods of focus, even on the weekends. And these weekend blocks are much more similar to what I used to do in university when I was preparing for that exam. There are slight differences between these types of days, but I want to focus mainly on the similarities. I always squeeze in an hour of exercise and honestly at this point there have been so many studies that confirm the positive impact of exercise on focus and academic performance but that's not the focus of today's video so instead let's zero in on this most important part of the day, the morning block. This is the juiciest part of the day and I'm sure by now you're familiar with the concept of flow as coined by Csikszentmihalyi which is essentially a stage where you focus on a single task and nothing else in the world seems to matter. Whether you know it or not, you have experienced flow. Think back to a time in high school when you were tackling a maths problem that seemed impossible. But as you spent more and more time working on it, the gears slowly began to click in your brain and you zeroed your absolute focus in on that problem and began to plot your way towards the solution. That right there is flow. Getting into this stage requires a prolonged period of focus, at least initially, and that's why we allocate a four hour uninterrupted block. That's right, four hours, uninterrupted. And here's the beauty of this deep work block. If you do manage to focus for those four hours, you will accomplish more than most people do in a full eight hour shift at work. 
It sounds lazy and self-indulgent, and honestly, I was surprised, but surveys show that at the high end, most employees only do just over 4 hours of work in an 8-hour shift, and that can go as low as 2 hours and 53 minutes, which is mental. My trick during this 4-hour block is that I pick a task that is a combination of super high priority and tends to take a long time to accomplish, and attack that with an uncommon ferocity. What that means is no breaks, I don't take 45 seconds to watch a TikTok, read a funny tweet, and even going to the bathroom is only if I absolutely have to. And even then, I avoid having any conversations with my co-workers on the way there or on the way back. This is the essence of deep work, as Cal Newport would put it. Long, uninterrupted spans of time that allow us to focus in and do our best work. So remember our list from principle zero? Take your most important priority that will take a decently long time and allocate this 4 hour period to just that. As much as possible avoid picking more than one task because all that does is split your focus. For me, this block is usually a coding project and it sounds impossible to focus for this long but I will be sharing the principles behind how I do do this after sharing a bit more about my day structure. Listen, if you do that morning block right, two things will be true. You'd have achieved close to or even more than you usually do in an 8 hour day. And secondly, you'll also be exhausted. The good news is that now you have a break and honestly you've earned it, meaning you can have the most lazy break if you want. Like go on Netflix, swipe through Tinder, just sit on the couch, I don't care, you've earned it. Refocusing can at times be difficult and that's why I make sure that after lunch I don't have another monster 4 hour block to look at. So instead of approaching it with the Cal Newport approach, with those long uninterrupted periods, it's Pomodoro season, and this keeps me at my peak for the afternoon. So basically a Pomodoro is a period of focused work, followed by a break. So what I usually do is a 50 minute block of work, followed by a 10 minute break, but if I am mentally taxed, I go for a 45 minute work block and a 15 minute break. And depending on the type of day I'm having, I either do 3 sessions of this, but on weekends or if I have a dissertation deadline that can go up to 5. And because this afternoon block is a lot more laid back, what it does allow, especially when I'm working, is a lot more collaboration because unfortunately it is important to have meetings and reply to slacks and what have you. And because I've already completed my highlight of the day, I can afford to take some time to do this. But if I don't have meetings in the afternoon, what I tend to do is either continue on what I was doing in the morning if I do have a deadline coming up, or more likely do something which is slightly less cognitively challenging like tableau dashboarding or writing a report. It may not be as focused on deep work, but it is still important work that does have to be done. But here's the key, don't use the shorter focus blocks as an excuse to not focus, still zero in and go as hard as you can. And on your breaks, that's when you can reply to emails or just do something a little more lighthearted or even just chill out for a little bit. It's that simple. Three Pomodoros and I'm done with the 9 to 5. I finish work between 5.30 and 6, so if I have executed on my day, it means I've been super productive so I can take a two and a half hour break, usually till 8 o'clock. Unfortunately, I am still doing my dissertation, so usually I have to do this outside of work hours and I usually take two more hours to do this between 8 and 10 o'clock, again in the shape of Pomodoros, being a 45 minute work block, a 15 minute break, and then 45 more minutes. And if you're wondering about my social life, at this time, I have none. I've kind of accepted balancing work and the dissertation and this channel, that's that for, you know, the next couple of months, and then after that, I can get back outside a little bit more. Although on weekends, after my afternoon work block, I don't have to work at all because I've done so much work. So I do have a good four or five hour period where I can chill out guilt free. It's a different day, whatever. Anyway, I realize that sometimes having a PDF or template version of these sort of principles is more useful. So I've started a newsletter where if you sign up for free, obviously, you get a PDF version of the video. So you can just refer to the principles after you've watched it and you can actually take action on what I say in the videos rather than just watching, thinking it's cool, and then moving on with your day. It's called Coffee with Nash, link in the description. And I also have a PDF version of my roadmap to learning data science in 2023, again, obviously free, down there as well. So that's the structure of the day, but just as important are the principles to not get distracted. If you're in a corporate environment, collaboration is essential, so I do make myself available, but I put as much friction between me and others as I can when I need to focus. 
So the way my office is structured, we have a working area and a quiet desk area for when you have to zone in. And this quiet area has a lot less foot traffic and in theory at least, you aren't supposed to be talking in that region. So as much as possible, I work from there. And in that same vein, my email notifications are always off, whether I'm in a focus block or not, because I will check it when I need to. But the one bane of my existence is these two apps right here. The never ending notifications are unreal. So what I do instead is just mute both of them, especially when I'm on a focus block. Listen, I'm an early stage data scientist. They will survive without me for a couple of hours. And if they really need to contact me, there's always that notify anyway button, especially on Slack. So what that means is that if somebody wants to contact me, they have to put in effort, whether that's coming to the quiet desk area or clicking that notify anyway button to try get to me. So this basically means in the morning focus block, people only talk to me if it is important. Otherwise it waits until after two o'clock. And to be honest, I usually collaborate with the same people. So they already know my working routine. And the second part of this principle should be pretty straightforward, phone off. Not on silent, not mobile data off or anything like that, just off. This prevents you being tempted to just quickly get back to that message because now you know your phone has to boot up and do all of that stuff. Throughout the day, I use music both as a reward and as a tool. So in the morning when I'm in my deep focus block, I usually opt for lyricless music from this channel in particular because that just helps me to completely zone in. And if I do have a deadline and I want to feel a little bit more epic, I go for a soundtrack, usually Batman or Interstellar, and occasionally even Dune. And what, <laughs> and it sounds super lame, but it just helps me get into the mindset of like, yeah, we're doing this. It's us against the world. We have to finish this or the world will collapse. So I find that that's just a good motivator and the lack of lyrics just keeps me zoned in. Once you're in a focus block, treat it like a roller coaster. Once you're locked in, there's no getting off. So once you're focusing, that does not get broken up. Avoid clicking on links to whatever as much as possible because one little detour to quickly find out this fun fact can lead to 20 minutes of distraction. But my most important tip on not breaking the focus is where this guy comes in, the flash card. Again, we're looking to conquer the Zygonic effect and it is inevitable that when you're working, distractions will wander into your mind. You might remember a super important email you have to send. And if you aren't prepared, it means that you'll break your focus because you're so worried about forgetting to do that, that you decide, okay, let me do this now. You go to your inbox, there's a bunch of other emails, you start reading those and the next thing you know, 30 minutes has gone by. The truth is these tasks that seem urgent can be put off for like an hour or two until your focus block is complete. But what you need to do is that whenever something that seems urgent comes into your mind, rather than doing it immediately, take out your flashcard and simply write a bullet point about the task that you need to do. Again, now that it's written out on paper in a to-do list, your brain can fold that away, free up the RAM and get back to focusing on what you need to do. So usually by the end of my focus sessions, I have like four or five bullet points. And as soon as the focus session ends, I can immediately address that. But what it means is that when I was focusing, I was 100% dialed in. Other quick tips I do to not break the focus is I never look at the time. So that means I take my watch off, I hide my taskbar, and even if I need to do something like switch tabs, I just need to ignore the bottom right corner for like half a second. And when doing the Pomodoros, I also look to leverage collaboration by using study with me's. I usually use study MD. And what this means is that I just feel more productive because I'm working with someone. And I also don't have to check how much longer is left in that focus block because all I have to do is wait for the and I know it's done. The last tip, the human brain does love rewards. So what I like to do is implement some small wins, some small checkpoints within the day. So the first thing that I do is that I practice intermittent fasting. So what that means is I only eat between 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. So conveniently, 12 o'clock is exactly halfway through my deep focus block. So whenever it is 12 o'clock, I just take out my protein shake and have some of that. And I don't know, it's just a little bit of a reward that just makes everything a bit easier. And because it's so quick, my focus is not interrupted at all. And the second thing is that in the afternoon during my Pomodoros, I don't have to listen to lyricless music. Instead, I can put on some of my favorite albums because I do have the ability to focus with lyrics in the background. So that just serves as a little bit of a reward when I am working. These tips have boosted my productivity and maybe not all of them will make it into your routine, but at least try them out and let me know what worked for you and what didn't. 
And I will be putting these into the newsletter so that it's just a PDF where you can look at the structure of my day and what I think is most important so that you don't have to rewatch this whole video again. Cheers for tuning in. Watch this video on my six biggest regrets from my first year as a data scientist.